Hello, my name is Colin Ernest. I'm the professional top laner for Echo Fox, and my IGN is Solo. I'm from a uh, small town out in the desert um, in California called Yucca Valley. Most people have been near it, but don't know it. It's a uh, right next to Joshua Tree, which is a pretty famous um, national park. A small town, 20,000 people, so it's kind of just like a tight-knit community, which is like quite a contrast to living in LA now, where, I don't know, everyone's kind of just like an NPC. <laughs> and you don't really like know people, I guess, except for the people you interact with, um, kind of like at work. So, I mean, I really appreciate it for what it was. I have like a lot of love for, for the town. I mean, my parents really enjoy like getting us into myself and my brother and sister into kind of like extra stuff. I was always like in sports and like soccer and wrestling, basketball, black football when I was growing up. So I've always kind of been like pushed in like a competitive side of things, but also just kind of like having fun and being on a team. And then uh, we got Tess when I was like 15 or 14. Yeah, she's a little tiny dog. And yeah, she's really smart and she's been a great pet. She barks a little bit too much. And she's a little bit too protective, but yeah, she's a good dog. I'm happy that we have her. For Christmas, I got my PlayStation. I got Final Fantasy Tactics, which ends up being like one of my favorite games. And it's very like, you know, special memory playing that and being really bad <laughs> and not understanding the game very early on. My grandmother played a lot of games because she, she was a nurse and so she would, you know, be at the hospital late and so she would play like on a Game Boy and stuff. <laughs> so, so she like really liked gaming and like kind of got me into it in a way. I remember she gave me like her old um, like Super Nintendo and like original Nintendo system. So it, it, she kind of like, it's like a gateway almost. As a kid, he was, you know, really always yeah. a gamer. We kind of had the uh, gamer house, so all his friends would come over to our house and a lot of birthday parties yeah. and special events and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, he's always doing it. So I grew up in Yucca Valley, right? I pretty much lived there until I was 18 or 19. And then my dad had been working in, in Glendale and he had a apartment in Pasadena. Kind of just wanted like a change of scenery, more or less, right? And decided to move out there and kind of just see what to do. Um, and I just kind of ended up getting a you know, job at you know, like the local Whole Foods and was working there for almost a year. All right, so I mean, to, pre to preface this, I don't really want to like shame anyone. <laughs> I don't want to like shame anyone for working. I mean, I, I guess at Whole Foods directly, but you know, any kind of similar situation. But at least for me, uh, when I started working there, um, I was just like frying tortilla chips at like four in the morning, right? I was doing some real grunt work. I mean, it kind of sucked. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it was a job, and Whole Foods is a great place to work. It was pretty brutal stuff, but you know, I was, you know, I was a good worker, and I think the staff and kind of appreciated me. And before, it was just kind of, you know, just like a regular job, right? Or at least for like a young person, where I was just trying to make money, have your parents happy. <laughs> but then, it like, as I was getting more attention, and people were telling me about, oh yeah, you could, you know, be a manager one day, or making it sound like this was going to be some career thing. It kind of like freaked me out because I was like, I don't really want to do that. <laughs> I didn't really like envision this as being like that much of a thing, right? I just decided like I didn't really want to do it anymore, so I just ended up kind of quitting. Didn't really know what I wanted to do, but was playing league. I guess the best way to put it is I kind of like stumbled into being like part of esports. Um, I don't think there was any like huge plan on, you know, because it wasn't like really a thing, right, back when I was playing uh, playing League early on. It was just like kind of a fun thing to kind of like compete on teams. Um, there wasn't like some huge industry yet. I think also just having kind of a medium to like be competitive and compete with people was just a factor I was missing. Just having that as an outlet for being able to like improve and feel like you're kind of making progress day to day. I think that was a huge part of why I kind of kept on pursuing it. Shortly after, I was just able to get on the team and kind of took off from there. Yeah, when I, when I first started out, people's kind of perception of me was um, more so not great. <laughs> that was mostly my fault, so I can't really like, 
say that it's unfair? One, like early on in solo queue, like, yeah, I wouldn't say I was like super toxic, but I was certainly not like the most fun person to play with in a lot of cases and like being an asshole in sometimes. I mean, a lot of that too was just like kind of being as competitive as possible. I mean, I wanted to be the best, right? Or I still do, but I didn't really want to like take shit from anyone. <laughs> I mean, I'm certainly not a jerk anymore in solo queue than I haven't really been for a long time. And so that kind of reputation has like kind of dropped off a lot. Like, I don't really see people talk about that very much just because when you're not really typing at all, like, no one's gonna say anything, right? The first, like, actual org I got on was um, Zenith, which was a small org that was trying to get into, like, the kind of qualifier tournaments for LCS. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that was kind of, like, short-lived because we didn't, uh, like, win. But, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was, like, the first time I was on, like, a team in, like, uh, like real, like, league environment, so. I always appreciated that. Shortly after that, I got on C9, Tempest, Cloud9's old uh, challenger team, or actually with Yusui, who's on Echo Fox. Yusui going down, not quite, knocked into the wall, the Wombo combo, Acadian on the backside, managing to pick up one, but Yusui and Solo, single-handedly carrying the team fight, petrifying gaze, Nar, a double kill to Yusui. We, I don't know, we like pretty much underperformed, I think. Um, for as much hype as we got, so. <laughs> but yeah, we kind of like imploded a little bit, so. I mean, there were some lessons learned. I don't know, I mean, every team kind of teaches you how to be like a better teammate, but I think Cloud9 was like the first team where it was so dysfunctional that, I don't know, I had to like reflect a lot on, you know, how to be in a team environment and um, how to do more. I mean, there were some lessons learned. I think on that one for sure. <laughs> Liquid, Echo Fox was unable to field an eligible roster yesterday, but has returned with both familiar faces and new names to fill out the roster. They've drafted two players from Challenger Squad, Ember, top laner Solo, and mid laner Golden Glue. I guess, yeah, I did make kind of like a small LCS debut. When I was on Ember, Echo Fox was having, I guess, visa issues with some of their players, and Golden Glue and I were available, so they had a sub in. It was a good experience for sure, even though we uh, didn't win anything. <laughs> but it was it was kind of like unfortunate because we didn't even like we were like scrimming with our own teams, right? This was just something that on the weekend we would just go and do. But during the week we would always just scrim with our own teams. Like they would even just like scrim with Frog and and uh, KFO. It sucks that the first game we played we played versus TL and we were smashing them really hard. We were playing really really well. Fox is doing a great job of working oh. around the map. They're just slowly hook, line, and sinkering Liquid out of their base into positions they want them and then able to get the fights. We ended up kind of just like squandering our lead or like throwing it away. It goes down immediately. That's the first Nexus turret that's going to be eyes on for Team Liquid. The second one gets hit. Full what? game. The Fox was on Liquid's side of the map and Liquid pushes back with one swift punch. Team Liquid take down Echo Fox. LCS is weird because it's like games like that define like your season. Uh, in a way. You know, if we would have won, I think we would have had a lot more confidence. We probably could have picked up like two or three wins for the rest of like, I think like the six game stretch we were playing with him or six or seven. Since we lost, it was like, like people kind of like lost confidence. It was just like, there was not like the cohesion that there was before. The first time we played with them was like, we were playing really, really well. But after that, it was just kind of like a mess. Yeah, I went to GCU after um, Gold Coin United. I mean, that roster was really good. Phoenix was on there, Centaurin was on there. We even had Mad Life, so. <laughs> it was pretty It was pretty interesting to be like around so many people that you know, were like really successful. And yeah, I mean, that whole year, uh, I mean, I learned a lot. Kind of once again, went to like a lot of game fives and we did pull it out, so. They popped Phoenix, they popped multiple members of GCU and Team Envy. Welcome back to the North American LCS. Afterwards, they didn't make franchising, so I got on to uh, Clutch Gaming. We did super well the first play, exceeded a lot of expectations. TSM routed the game over, and that is the end of this series and the end of TSM's perfect record of attending the playoff finals. I mean, the next play wasn't great. I think it was just, you know, I mean, there's a number of things that went poorly, but. Nothing too crazy. Echo Fox here trading out all five members of their previous roster. Right. So all five members of the Echo Fox members have changed. Now Huni, Dardock, Demonte, Lost, Movie, they all have left. And now we have new people coming in. Phoenix, Rush, Apollo, Haku, and Solo. So we have three members from Clutch Gaming and two members that are new to the team. I mean, I've always 
really liked Rick as like an owner. He seemed like one of the most like passionate owners. So even when I got traded, I was pretty happy that I got traded to like somewhere that I would end up liking. So that was nice of Clutch to kind of do. <laughs> or I guess Echo Fox as well for getting us. Yeah, I was really happy to come here and um, I thought the roster was a better version of Clutch and I, I still do. I think we have, you know, more potential and I think we have just kind of a better atmosphere. And that's gonna give Fox the victory. The carries stand strong for Echo Fox and they will upset Cloud9 here. The six game slide finally ends. Having them come out for LCS, um, being able to see my parents like pretty much whenever I want is something I've tried not to like take for granted. I know a lot of people come from even like out of state or out of the country when they compete for LCS. I mean, I can't imagine it's kind of like tough sometimes to not be able to connect with anyone, not be able to have that support system. It's like when we, when it used to be in sports, it used to be in baseball and soccer and tennis and all those things, and we either coached or were a spectator, and it really hasn't changed much. I mean, I'm pretty grateful for the fact that they're always here, and um, yeah, I guess I'm just really lucky that way. Number two, Echo Fox must do something or they will lose their face, but Bjergsen kites back, they find that flash pulverized, Phoenix is low, they don't get him just yet, but TSM, yeah, hear it from the crowd, they have won, and they're into the semifinals. I think as long as we keep on improving, it's just about kind of getting better. I mean, it's not like spring is the end of the world, I think if we just kind of try to improve week to week and game to game, then I think we can do a lot of uh, a lot of good for the rest of the split and then move on to summer. I mean, I love League for what it is and what it's done for me and esports and, and all the orgs and fans. But I think if video games is the most important thing I did, then, you know, I probably squandered a lot of opportunity, right? So hopefully, you know, I can take what I've done here and, you know, do some real good, maybe like Animal Rescue or just helping people kind of improve their own lives, so that's kind of always been a goal for mine.